Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, the most entertaining matchup I think we could possibly have. Let me introduce in the top left, Micro Jackson himself. A rematch for the World Championship of 2016, I give you Beyond. In the blue, in the top left. And facing off against him like he did seven years ago, and also pretty much every week at this point. We have the final boss in this ESL Cup Finals, of course. It's dark. Best of five TVZ. There are already roaches in production, so I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you enjoy, uh, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. Jimmy, quick, what are we at? Just, no, quick. 1,127 likes. Cast another series. Statistically likely to be one of these two, especially Dark, who has played, I think, passing beyond for the most professional games of anyone in this entire year, especially of the top 10 players. But hopefully you've had a good day so far, and hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. As we have no more time for pleasantries and introductions, as Dark has places to be. And those places include more than halfway across the map, with his first few roaches. The Reaper spotted a late hatchery. It spotted uh, no gas in the main, though I think it may have caught a glimpse of a roach. Either way, just one marine. No, he's complete. He's building a bunker, but it's far too late already. As the first two roaches just go into work, the SCVs are pulled, trying to mineral walk through. Marines on the high ground, but a Ravager has arrived. I just want to point out, uh, we skipped right past it, but there was a lot of chatter. It looked like a lot of fun in between, uh, right at the start of this match. But Dark was using it to cover his roach warren, or so it seems. Even building a Ravager inside. Beyond went with a bl near blind. Not blind, but you know, like maybe a bit of a cataract or something. Uh, 3cc. As only scouting with the Reaper doesn't get you all the information. Yeah, by the way, they went back and forth. Any Korean fans out there want to translate my translators um, uh, at the shop at the moment? So, concussive shouts. Beyond is not dead, despite the unscouted roaches, but we've certainly uh, seen better days here. As two Ravagers just kind of hanging out, working with their corrosive miles on whatever they can. Dark taking that center base behind it, of course. Dark is probably the best Zerg in the world at, well, I would say the best Zerg in the world at, at kind of transitioning out of cheese because Serral uh, rarely does in general as a much more standard middle of the road. The foil here, the second best, second highest ranked Zerg in the world here, Dark. Uh, has a lot more variety to his gameplay. And it's it's a lot of fun to watch. But I have no, like, what now? Because Beyond has three CCs. He's like, are you are you kidding me, bro? You were chatting me up earlier, Dark Side. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but from my uh, understanding, that is the uh, essentially um, the equivalent of saying lol in korean and spamming it is uh xd uh and and that explains why we see it on these occasions so somewhat often but beyond i think taking a bit of a different tone after that early aggression there's a lot of zerglings on the way dark is he knows beyond and he knows what he wants to do it's going to be bio with barracks and almost nothing else. Dark is not getting greedy. He's got a fourth hatch on the way, but he's only got 30. Oh my God, that ba that's bait. Oh, what? What are these mind games right now? I don't know if he saw the Ravager count, but Beyond is actually building a ton of bunkers despite seeing the fourth hatch. He's like, no, 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 it's coming. All right, oh Lord. Building plenty of bunkers. Yeah, even with that rich Vespine, well, getting enough Ravagers to bash through the first bunker, but the Zerglings are on the way. A bulwark of bunkers, but the Vanguard cannot hold against this much corrosive bile. A Zergling at the back traps the Marauders in, try to go to the other bunkers, but they will be torn to shreds. And it looks like Dark in game one. Just going to blast it. Every time I say it, then uh, suddenly Beyond's winning. I don't, I'm not sure how that happens. He's target firing some of the Marines down there. But Dark... Actually, Beyond has the worker lead. 
after this. As Dark is now building a dozen drones. Another round of Zerglings. Infantry weapons level 1, already stim and concussive shell. But you do need units. Otherwise, well, another round of Zerglings. Those Ravagers working their way through. And even though Beyond has 40 SCVs, that seems to be about all he... I, like, I keep saying, stop. Stop transitioning into the game ending. Every time I start saying, like, oh, it looks like Dark's going to be cleaning up a bit, suddenly eight more Marines just pop out of the ground and start shooting at the Ravagers. That's what it feels like here. Okay, and then it's over. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm getting almost whiplash off that one. But Dark takes game one. Just kind of bopping Beyond right on the nose there trying to take three cc's in my esl cup finals i don't think so good sir uh at least not with just barracks behind it no cloaked banshee no siege tanks none of that you can't just make marines well actually that might inspire beyond to go back to his three per build here uh, as we jump into jimmy please game number two i'm babylon Dark with a decisive game one victory. I don't think Beyond going to be too put out by that one. Neo Humanity is uh, a map of trials and great tribulations, and getting it out of the way early is probably the best case scenario. Beyond will go back. Now, I've heard some hemming and hawing about whether or not this is Maru's or Beyond's build. Here's the thing. Even if Maru did it first, which I, I'm not convinced of, even if Maru did it better, it's Reaper's. And beyond from now it's essentially like it's it's like we retired his number except then he came back and, and picked up the jersey again but reapers were nerfed twice because of beyond beyond definitely and i quote against dark i believe it was an esl cup finals it might have been korean starcraft league somebody can go back and find it or you can you know go with my favorite uh source of information just trust me bro where like six months ago beyond for like the third game in a row did this reaper build like the two racks reaper it wasn't exactly so figured out at the time against dark and the translator we had maddox translating so this isn't just me putting on my uh pseudo korean hat Anyang, um <clears throat> but we had maddox translating and beyond dark asked how many times are you going to do this bill after dark had already made it a couple times and then beyond responded until i win and then, Mauru, several months later, proceeded to win the GSL Finals against Dark, using that build more often than not. The, the two rags reaper, which is a market switch in the TVZ metagame from the 1-1-1, from the barracks, the factory, the starport, that has dominated um, Terran versus Zerg for uh, essentially uh, modern history, at least the last several years, if not all of them in StarCraft II pretty much all the years that weren't beyond getting the reaper now it has been the default i have never seen such a dramatic shift in the matchup um at least in legacy of the void to a completely pretty much a completely different opener out of town um from from that baseline once again besides the pre-reaper nerf era when it was literally just reapers but this is macro reapers mac reapers not macaroni and cheese, but two, yeah. And with them, you do have a lot more ability. One, you have the wall off of the barracks at the natural, which is already kind of your preemptive defense against things like roaches. That doesn't necessarily stop them, but it definitely slows them down. Three reapers can actually kind of fight roaches. The grenades are okay for dealing with it. And it gives you that extra scouting info. So, like, the problem is, this is one of those don't try it at home sort of builds because... You lose those Reapers early, even one or two of them, and any sort of advantage you might have gained at the little edges, you can cut away from your opponent with the Reapers, are completely nullified if you lose one. Or if you don't, if you're not just super active, they're very active, yes, high APM units. Um, so, um, they're for Maru and beyond, not for people like me and you and Cure, so. I wouldn't recommend it. I, uh, you still see it on the ladder sometimes, but I think the 111 is still uh, a very solid baseline. The grenades popped the queens out of the way, they, uh, and they took offense to that. We're going to drop five creep tumors where once there was one. 
matter of principle. Good luck dealing with that, Dion. Gets one. Going for two. Okay, he'll get two. You know what? <laughs> Quite an oncologist. Reapers out of way. Queens. We'll make sure they feel uncomfortable about it. Get back. Get off my creep. Mm, you, this... Beyond almost losing a reaper. This time around, it's going to be dark with a quick bailing nest. Is he misreading this or is he reading this correctly? He may be expecting a big marine follow-up, and he's correct in that. I want to point out that Beyond just made a safety banshee. That is the fear that dark strikes. We can pretend like this is an uncloaked banshee for Skep. Now... If Dark was going to do some sort of all-in, the best defense overall, the most reliable, is a Banshee. Of course, you do have a lot of utility out there, but just building one Banshee? No, no, no. It might have been part of his original build, but it sure as hell looks like Dark struck some fear into him with his aggression in the last game. That Banshee denied the fourth. And Dark already has the Zerglings. He predicted... Wait, did he build- is he building two baneling nests? Oh, no. He didn't even realize he built the first one. Dark, you have a baneling nest already done! Oh, he was so adamant. He was so, he was right! Wait. You know, it's a decoy baneling nest. Dark, play it off. It's like the- it's like Beyond's Banshee. Just play it off, okay? It was part of the strategy. This way, when he snipes a baneling nest with drops, he doesn't expect banelings for another, like, 40 seconds. Um... I'm pretty sure Dark actually read Beyond's build really well. Built the Baneling best. He was already ready. And then he forgot how well he read it. And defaulted to a Baneling nest timing when the lair was building. Which is when you usually build it. You usually build it so it finishes with the lair so you can get bait. Wow. The queen moot really coming together. You usually get the Baneling nest timed out with the lair finishing. Give or take. So that way you can get Baneling speed at the same time. But if you think there's going to be a big attack earlier, you build it earlier, obviously. So Dark built one earlier, and then he built one with the lair timing. So, I think we we're getting a bit of both in this one here. He's gonna come in with the Zergling. Spot a third base. Banshee. I, I, I mean, its purpose was mostly a safety Banshee. I, I think we can be confident in that. Oh my god. Queens. Goes back in for the tumor. Bane speed is finishing up. 1-1 one, one for Beyond. We're gonna have about uh, a minute advantage on uh, Dark's 1-1 one, one here. Already an armory done as well for Beyond, so we can start the 2-2 two, two immediately. And he does. It's a priority here as it's very unlikely this initial push will do game-ending damage, but he might be able to set himself up for a follow-up in a couple minutes. I didn't even register this. What's going on? Mutas! Oh my! Wow, after that Ragnarok game a few days ago, I didn't like, it just didn't even register. I didn't even realize the spire. I was too busy talking about the, the nuance of two baneling nests. All right. Uh, and also your car's extended warranty. That's just as exciting. <sighs> like and subscribe for a discount. Yeah, the Queen's having trouble. The Mutas are revealed here. We'll see, Beyond it already has a second factory on the way. The Mutas. And deal with the drops directly. And Beyond's greatest strength. Going to be mitigated somewhat by the Mutalisks. But they are used defensively to start. Which means Beyond can set up turrets back at home. Minimizing their aggressive potential. And he starts Widowmine production. Which gives him some basic defense against him. And, well, and offense as well. Of course they can backfire. They're not going to be on the field yet. This isn't going to intimidate Beyond from doing his initial tank push. But the tanks do need to be protected from the Mutalist potentially picking them off. Siege tanks on that high ground. Still a couple Reapers there. He takes such good care of them. I mean, they're probably going to die in this next fight, but... Still going. Good target fire. Yep, finally. Oh, wait. The Reaper lives. The Medivac does not. What is the Muta count? A dozen. Sets up. Beyond backs off. He, he clears the creep. Resets off of it. Trying to protect those tanks. 
Both these players have had years of Mutaling Bane experience fighting with or against it. It is a classic, classic composition. It was the main unit composition back in Wings of Liberty, and even much of Legacy of the Void. Hydro Ling Bane is preferred most of the time, or just straight up Ling Bane. Much because of Widowmines. Mutus flying by, taking some pot shots, killing our CVs. Add ons exposed, but Thor is here. Pops out just in time, and the tank push is coming together. Plus two is done for the Marines, and armor is soon to follow. Targeting the hatchery. Will be transfused. Beyond decides keeping the Marines alive is worth a temporary stoppage of the hatch. And, well, Dark is trying to come back to the main to defend another army. We saw a Widow Mine end up getting seven kills as well. Where are the Mutas in all this? Scrambling back to defend. Dark has an evolution chamber taken out. His plus two carapace will be denied. Not far from completion. And I think right now Beyond demonstrating the main weakness of the Mutas. We'll see. Mainling's coming in. But Beyond, he picks up some of the uh, Marines here. But look at the supply. Even though Dark will take this fight, he lost his upgrades. His creep spread has been pushed back almost to his bases. He's still just building Mutas. The Mutas kind of preclude any sort of teching up. They're such expensive units. And they're so hard to really make worth it um, in a, a relatively even money game. The Banelings are rolling in. A few connections like this could really help. But you can see Beyond's experience kicking in. He knows exactly how to take these trades. He knows if he just kind of keeps his army in a relatively consolidated fashion. And you know his, his instinct is just send out drops everywhere. But in this case, kind of minimal on the drops. Just enough to drag some of the units out of position and grab more of them out. He's already got 3-3 on the way. Is there an infestation pit for, for Dark? Indeed, there is not. More Banelings. Plus two, plus two Flyer attack is about to finish. Plus two Carapace on the ground is still pretty far off ever since Beyond denied it. A little bit of a questionable evolution chamber placement from Dark. Finds a drop. Kind of a lone medevac over here. I think he was trying to pick off potentially Mutas coming by, but the Zerglings went with him. That's a lot of Mutas. 22 Mutas! So many mutas! He's actually forcing Beyond into something of a base trade. That's 44 supply of mutas just right there. Right now, Beyond not dealing with it head on. The mutas are still flocking. The main orbital dies. Though down goes the overseer. The engineering bay. Plus three attack. That's a huge kill. He gets it. Plus three attack is denied. So Dark's starting to finally find some progress with the Mutas. But the Thor coming to chase. Knocks another one out of the sky. And the Marines are running the table right now. Fourth base, gun down. Hatchery, eliminated. Dark is running out of economy, and this is not a low economy composition. He, need to, he has zero larva. Every larva is being used right now. The Zerglings are coming in. He wants to target this down. Widowmon takes a big chunk of the Marines. Uh, and, well, more importantly, the Zerglings. But the supply, 185 to 140. Dark tries the Mutus. But he just can't get enough done to make him worth it. Beyond's momentum will carry him probably over the finish line here. All right, Widowmines actually dragged into the Terran army as well, but there are so many Marines behind it. The Thor zoning out the Mutus, tries to magic box him, gets on top. Baneling's rolling through, Beyond on creep right now. He doesn't care. Juggles one of the Thors, and Beyond strikes back. With a vengeance. Oh. Dark, unable to make enough progress with the Mutas before the time ran out. Before the Terran army came together and started marching across the map. And double baneling that's not, not uh, quite making the difference. And we're all tied up at one to one. That's one of those games where it feels like Dark is somewhat limit testing. He's like, huh, I've seen a few people making this strat work. He tries it. He's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> I doubt we'll see it again. At least in a straight up macro style. But. 
it definitely can work, especially maybe if they go for, um, like a mech opener or something, some sort of committed cheese. But the mutas are just so costly. Spire takes so long. 100 gas apiece. Hmm. Fun to watch, though. Hmm. Looks like Dark has chosen blue, Beyond has chosen red. This time around, I'm not actually sure if they care. They were very likely using player colors, which will have them um, as whatever they chose. Like purple or whatever. I like purple. I think it's a nice one. Especially on some of the skins that we rarely see in tournaments. You know, I always thought... Not to um, go off on a tangent here, uh, but it's a sign, okay. But I always thought it was a little weird and kind of a, a sign of the haphazard nature with which microtransactions were, were implemented in StarCraft 2. Well, I think because StarCraft 2 was a game originally sold, you went up to GameStop and bought in a box. Not as a stock, no, but like a physical box with a CD. You put into your computer. Like, how many people watching right now even have a CD-ROM drive? Okay. It wasn't something you could download back in my day. Um, I think I downloaded Legacy of the Void, but I do have the collector's edition signed by the developers, of course. But I never pulled the DVD-ROM. I think it's still got the plastic on it. Anyways. So, um, it just wasn't really designed with those things in mind. So, when skins started to become a thing with Legacy of the Void, which I fully support, I think they, a lot of them look really cool, but have some clear issues with the visual clarity. Like some dramatic moments around roaches with burrowing claws, or tunneling claws, or marines with or without combat shield. Yeah, what are those zerglings doing, bro? Dark is like, oh, that's my build. ZZ. Zerglings, he's baneling busting him, by the way. I think be unsuspicious. But yeah, so in tournaments, the reason you don't see skins might not be that the players don't have them, but the mod we use for tournaments to get the observer interface really nice and all that also disables skins in the game. So that way, uh, opponents do not see them, and uh, we don't see them either as observers. So now make of that what you will, but it maintains the competitive atmosphere. A competitive atmosphere where you can still tell a Zergling from a Baneling and a dead SCV well, from a live one. The Banelings rolling in beyond, in typical beyond fashion, was like, how about I just do only Marines? And it's kind of working. What? So Dark did a straight up Baneling bust. Beyond had only Marines and SCVs. And you're telling me that Beyond is... I don't know if winning... Well, no, 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 no. I think this is what winning looks like. Because look at the drone count. 21 to 22 SCVs. And mules exist. He's gonna get burrowed banes. That's... That's his ace in the hole here. His ace burrowed in the hole. My god. Oh, dark. Beyond's like, he wouldn't just, he wouldn't just keep making bane targets down the bane lane like it's nothing, and to him it isn't. What? <laughs> oh, okay, alright, Doc. I, I love the burrowed bane idea, but this is an absolute, wow, this is such a Hail Mary. Like, how many, how many marines can you even hit with it, right? Oh, this is an utter disaster. But it but it started the Prima strategy guide that Baneling's counter marines. Yeah, maybe yours. I didn't Be on. You know, at least it well he didn't go three CC. That's the difference here. And there's no way he's expecting burrowed banes. But even if they hit. Is it going to be, you know what, let's just get excited that they might hit, okay? Let's not ruin it by saying, well, even if he kills 20 Marines, he's still going to be in a horrible economic spot with no real foreseeable follow-up. And eventually, Beyond will just have too many Marines and he'll probably win the game. No. But the Bane Lang Mines, he's going to do, he might it. Well, we're going to see. Hopefully, Beyond doesn't just scan. All right. Oh, my God. Like, it might be perfect. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Holy. Sweet mother of mercy. I. Wow, that was actually perfect. Beyond has to make a comment in the chat now. Like, I don't even know. It, I, I don't even need to understand. How do you not comment on that? Well, Dark got the only hit that potentially ever could have saved it. He literally killed all but one Marine, and that Marine, I think it's dead now, but traumatized as it watched literally every single one of its friends explode seemingly out of nowhere. Well, so that is the fighting underhanded chance. And now beyond with only two CCs. I, I mean, I guess you just pre-split the Marines, but. <laughs> oh, my. The scan, he actually missed a lot of them. The Baneling trying to roll away. Full on campaign mission strategies here on a dark. Next one's going to be Baneling drops on the Marines. The poor man speed bane. Except you still kind of got to get overlord speed otherwise. <laughs> I remember the few, few uh, months when dropper lords, overlords with drop, did not look any different than overlords without drop, which made ZVZ quite intriguing. Other matchups, not so much, as it's pretty easy to just kill. Ah, looks like he's avoided the Baneling mines with the, um, with an advanced strategy called flying over them. <laughs> uh, it'd be crazy if a mine could hit up, but that wouldn't make any sense. Why would you call it a mine, then? Well... Dark actually up to 62 drones. We got a game on our hands. That bit, I can't, like, the emotional damage he did. Just as much as the actual, well, he needed to kill those Marines. If he didn't, then they would have just run him over. He would have been so far behind. But it looks like, because of Dark's intense greed behind it, and very importantly, the fact that Beyond didn't have 3cc, means that Dark has a fighting chance here. Now the Marines are battling through. There's a little bit of... Oh, well, those aren't speed banes, which means they're target practice. Oh, my. He's got plus one. He's grinding through the Queens. It looks like Dark will hold, but at what cost... Oh, wait, there's more Marines. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, well, never mind. Nah, well, if it wasn't Beyond, then maybe... Yeah, well... Oh, my. Well... Mainling speed will finish eventually, assuming Dark doesn't leave. Nope, nope, he's dead. All right. <laughs> oh, no amount of Mainling mines is gonna save him here. Scan. I don't know if he even killed any. He's pre-splitting against Bane mines. Bane speed is done. Here comes another army. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Catches the Bane Mount. Well. It was a nice try. Maybe some good clickbait. But it ain't ha- G. G. Just one singular G. And beyond, we'll go to match point. Two to one. <laughs> well quite an entertaining series so far dark i think having some fun with it for sure we'll see what he pulls out now that he's on the ropes oh it looks it looks like we're gonna dark how dare you curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal beyond lol Yeah, we're gonna go with the Threepers once again. Anything like Beyond plus Marine. I say I say Threepers, but it, this really is the easiest way to get yourself set up with plenty of Marines. That last game, I can't. I mean, I very much can believe that Beyond just casually sat there against a committed all-in Baneling bust 
with just marines and SCVs. The marines didn't have any upgrades. And he just holds it. Just target fires down every baneling that gets into range. No problem. Let's the zerglings in. Which is probably a good thing in that case because he was able to isolate and kill some of them. And make it a more manageable number. Ah! It's the it's the three racks reaper, not the threeper. Which I still haven't settled on a way to describe that differently. Besides, it's not that hard to say three racks. We're not paying by the syllable. Otherwise, I'd be far into debt. <sighs> Why say many word when few word do trick? Because otherwise, I wouldn't be able to run nearly so many ads. Like and subscribe. This is definitely a fun series, though. Metabolic boost. Zergling speed. Pretty much every Zerg unit has a speed boost. And if you really want to get technical, um, creep is a speed boost in and of itself. Do any air units aside from overlords have a speed boost? I mean, there's only mutas, corruptors, and broods. And vipers. Oh, the first reaper. Yeah, but... I don't know how many speed upgrades there are, like six, seven? Zerglings, roaches, banelings, lurkers, hydras, ultras. Um, kind of running out of Zerg units on the ground. Thrones don't because that'd be broken. Queens, we're counting creep, I guess. Now, that fourth Reaper is going to tell a story. A story. Of how Beyond wants to get Reapers nerfed again. Here we go. Well. The Zerglings. Oh, what a juke! But he does end up stranding a couple. Honestly... Yeah, Dark just fully committed. He's got 22 drones. He's preempting the jump. He's waiting for it. Oh my god, but wait. The Reapers have enough in their numbers. Beyond being very careful not to jump down. Well, you can't jump down there. There's the balcony railing. They can't jump over a railing. They can jump up a cliff, though. Don't ask. Don't worry about it. Dark is very committed. 23 drones. His economy is absolutely shattered. But he defended the Reapers. And this side of the map, the add-ons are on the outside. So there might be a small opportunity to take out the reactors here. One Marine pops out. Two Marines aren't going to be enough to discourage him. Yeah, he's going to take out the reactors. And that might be part of why Dark committed so hard to this. He's losing a lot of reserve. He's losing a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of reserve. He gets the, like, Jimmy, Jimmy, as much as I'd love to see. Okay, well, I guess we'll watch again because there's no battle report here. But, yeah, I mean, ends up losing 22 Zerglings in total. But he does severely hamper the, uh, Beyond's ability to continue producing Marines. There's one Marine stuck behind there. If we look, just all tucked in. Let me in! Guys, I can see! <laughs> uh, a lot of awkward things on this side of the map. Well, it's going to be, now lo and behold, Marines and Medivacs. I know, you're shocked. Possibly chagrined. But maybe just grinning. As beyond sticking to his guns and his drugs and his guns and his gun upgrades. And uh, his gun men transports and all that. And that, that's pretty much, yeah, most of those. Beyond knows what he wants. He's been making these for 13 years. He's not going to stop now. Where's the Bane Nest, Dark? Three. Two. Okay, show, show me the Bane Nest. If I was a... There it is. And as you see, the standard town right alongside that lair.
Looks like we got a macro game on our hands. One one begin. Begins. Third command center now for Beyond. So, remember, he's not going to have the ability to kind of uh, explode that economy as you usually do with 3cc. That's when you see the SCV count keeping up with the drone, or in TVP, the probe count. Dark going to try the mutas again. We'll see if he finds more success this time around. Spire is on the way. He's already got the upgrades first, so going to be very important to keep those going. Creep spread is good, but the Marines are mostly uncontested here. They're just, they're only six lings on the field. He's getting a bunch more. Might be able to get the spawning pool itself, though that really isn't a high priority target. Marines picked up. Get out. Minimal damage to the medevacs here. Going to be able to keep the pressure on, but he hasn't really stalled out the creep spread during all of this. So... That means Dark is still looking comfortable. Plenty of creep. I'm surprised he hasn't taken a fourth hatchery yet. Combat shield about to complete. Uh, Spire. Dark is banking up. Enough for... He's gonna have eight, nine mutas. As that Spire finishes. Mm, the Zerglings give, uh, get the wraparound. Creep tumors being cleaned up as Beyond kind of sweeps around with the medevacs and some scans. Nine mutas on the way. Plus one flyer attack, so indicating quite a commitment. He's not just it's not just uh, flirting with the idea, but instead he's uh, going to continue to flood him. The flock. The Zergling counterattack, almost nothing here. Not even a bunker to wall this off. Be unsurprisingly vulnerable to the counterattack. Doesn't cancel the depots. So if Dark can crush one army here, he's actually in a good spot to kind of springboard that. Trying to cut off some reinforcements. The Mutas are here to do so. He knows the mistake he made in the previous Muta game was trying to fight the army, which is almost never the uh, ideal in this sort of game. You want the mutas on the other side getting damage done while you defend with the ground arm. Baneling's rolling in the siege tanks. Sieging up. The marines, though, stay on their ground. He might lose the tanks, but the marines are still intact with four medevacs behind him. These stim marines are going to be a lot to contend with. The mutas are still going to work. Beyond at 50 SCVs, but he's got four medevacs and a bunch of marines under him, which in Beyond's hands are potentially game-ending units. He has, well, one baneling easily targeted. One medevac take it out. More banelings behind it. Looking for the target fire. Take it out the queens in front. The banelings can't even close the distance here. Target fires one. More mutas. One, two mutas down. Makes it more. Three, four. I can keep counting. I'm very good at this. Oh, but the banelings slips underneath. He still gets another muta. Oh my god, the amount of damage he's able to do. These marines probably weren't supposed to be here, but he gets another. He gets all nine mutas. The first nine of the ring rate i mean the the mutalisks are taken down by beyond's ability with those marines but dark is able to maintain over 60 drones he has four bases the creep spread continues to metastasize across the map and 2-2 two -two has begun beyond does not have an armory he does not have the ability to progress those upgrades in order to compete with dark and dark has the supply lead so even though Beyond's Marines are possibly more cost-effective than literally anyone else in the world, yes, including Maru, he just doesn't have much else to back it up. Mutas flying in. Missile turret. Tucked in, but not ideal location there to zone out the Mutas. Armory on the way, but Dark is going to have a significant upgrade advantage assuming he's able to maintain his evil chambers which i think he will be mutas can no actually well some of them he's got split mutas or is that all of them i believe that's all of them all of them go down and the banelings 12 kills dark still on a pretty tenuous drone count at 61 a widow mine has burrowed i heard it i don't know where 
The the creep spreading. <laughs> yeah, a little ambitious there. Dark. Nosy. He has the army to beat Beyond. But it depends on the angle here. Beyond off of creep is still very dangerous. Especially until 2 2 is done. And Dark doesn't want to risk losing a critical mass of units until he has that decisive advantage. 16 banelings. 2 2 finishing up another set of banes. In fact, you can see one of the survivors, which is a weird thing to say. You mean one of the failures of a baneling attack. If it's still alive, that means it's failed. Or just hasn't succeeded yet. Either way, Widow Mines take out most of the front line here. Banelings. There should be enough of them to threaten Beyond, but he's somehow working his way to the hatch. Heads into the main. His only chance here is to string out the lings and banes for long enough that his marines are cost efficient. But with 2-2 done now, it's going to be that much harder for the marines. And the queen take down one of the medevacs. Another one being targeted, sacrificing the queens on royal blood, spilling it here. But Beyond is still tearing through another hatchery. He's stuck on the creep, but the orbital command is taken out. Those mutas just ripping up any of the few marines. The command center itself, a bunch of SCVs. Beyond still has a solid army supply and he's working on 2-2. He's adding in widow mines, which are the great equalizer in so many games. But Dark still has a fourth. He was able to get that base in the center up and running. He's still got 62 drones. He just needs to survive the next couple minutes. And not even a couple minutes, really like one minute. If he survives one more minute, I think he'll have the critical mass of units, even against 2-2, because Beyond's economy has been hurt badly. He cannot maintain this level of production. Dark will have too many units for him to beat. Even with the Widow Mines, even with the Marine Micro. Beyond has one more shot. One opportunity. And if he doesn't get critical damage, that'll be the end of it. 2-2. Two, two. Finished up. This is the best Beyond's going to get right now. It is not going to get any better from this point. The Banelings rolling in, trying to drag. He's actually unburrowing the mines. But this is taking valuable time. Dark is buying himself so much of it. The supply lead widens. Groove spine's done. Gonna take down the rocks and the outside his own third. Thor, Widow Mons. Dark working on. He has the Hydras now. Something to give him some range support that isn't Mutus. This game, finally getting some of that. Widow Mines looking for opportunities. Beyond, he wants to fight, but he's very wary. He knows he can't afford it. He can't afford to be caught off guard. Not even once. That's He stimmed the entire army here. Right up into the gap, trying to take this position. And the Marines splitting back, but a lot of Banelings closing in so quickly. Still, though, the Marines... Somehow come out on top. Another round of Banelings make it through. Hydra's getting gunned down, but he's on top of the hatchery now. Good splits. Oh, the Banelings closing the distance. The Thor in an awkward spot. Oh, there are enough Marines to hold the line. One Baneling gets through. The Hydra count is just too high. And the Mutas, where did they come from? But they're back just in time. And that means we head to game number five. Beyond taken down. Dark strikes back. <sighs> Dark taking that game rather seriously. After some uh, <laughs> less impactful builds. Quite a dramatic series we got on our hands here. Beyond almost able to break through. Making Marines look so good, as always. But Dark holds on. And that means we get the maximum number of... Well, actually, the maximum number is uh, if they tie. Gonna, but whatever. Uh, game five. Oh, God. It's Gresman. So, settle in. It's either going to be five or 50 minutes. 
um, with these two. And uh, don't check it. Don't check it. Okay, well, like and subscribe while you're down there. Um, but I can't, like, this, the, the reason that Gresvin goes, is either a relatively quick match or goes so long, is the sheer amount of space between bases. You have a tendency to expand away from your opponent. The only bases that are kind of close are the center bases near the siege tank canyons. Um, but otherwise, you're literally expanding to separate corners a lot of the time, which means it gets very hard to maneuver your army around in a way that doesn't leave you completely exposed. So you end up with these kind of longer, more turtly matches because of that sheer distance. Yeah, the overlords were specifically checking for proxy racks. We got another triple racks. Tri racks. Sounds like a villain in a Borderlands game. Which, you know, wouldn't be too unfitting here. <laughs> wow. Scouring for proxies. Probably a good precaution. You face Triraxis, Eridar Lord of the Reaper Legion. That's what this music is from, right? That was like the last I played of World of Warcraft before StarCraft II came out. And I, I canceled my subscription because I was poor. StarCraft II has saved me a lot of money over those years. One way or another. It's been a more profitable endeavor. I hope you enjoy That was a fun, uh, dungeon, though, I think. I don't remember if it was fun because it gave good loot or if it was actually good, but memorable. Reaper Lord of the Terran Legion would have been better, I think. Speaking of, Beyond is here, and here we go again. Last game, Dark was able to just grab and rip apart those Reapers. Even though it cost him economically, just removing those Reapers from the field, it gave him a lot of leeway. I can't believe Beyond is still going mass Reaper. This guy, why are you like this? Are you gonna, how long are you going to keep doing that build? Till I win. <laughs> Beyond, what are you doing? He's like, it's all right. We'll never actually nerf Terran. Okay. Ah, <sighs> fair enough. Stim, don't tell me. He's just gonna... It's just Marines. Yeah. You know? I mean, what did you expect? What did I expect? What did we expect? I think we're all on the same page here. That's a lot of Zerglings. Dark at 21 drones. Yeah. Zerglings looking for the wrap. There's nowhere for them to run. He throws the grenades on the outside. Oh my god. Everybody dance now. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, well. Everyone dies at the end. But a whole lot of Zerglings. Five Reaper. Was that really only five? Not like so many. It feels like twice as many. I swear it was more than five. They just move so fast, all right? This really did cut into dark, uh, Dark's potential economy. But this side of the map, Beyond's add-ons are not exposed. And he didn't kill the Reapers quick enough to really capitalize on it. So Dark, not nearly as much space as the previous game. Okay, not nearly, but... Still, still a decent amount once you remove those Reapers from the field. He did prevent every single one from getting home. So that's a, you know, moral victory, I guess. Four, oh, fourth hatchery is on the way for Doc. Three command centers for Beyond. Double evil chamber. 
And yeah, it looks like we're settling in. We'll see. This time, Beyond, importantly, has three CCs. He didn't go for the fourth Rex. Or fifth. He's instead got an economic follow-up. Which means Dark will have a little more space before getting hit with a big attack. Um, or as strong of an attack. But Beyond will have a lot more to fall back on. He will no longer have the obligation to get so much damage done. As the, the economic gap will be much closer. Both because Dark built so many Zerglings and wasn't able to slow down production. And uh, because he's got that third command center, of course. So... More barracks. Wonder what he's gonna make out of those. Rhymes with... Barines. Third CC. Has landed. Bandling Nest is just now on the way. Some of the Marines left behind. There's just not enough medevacs for everyone, but that will soon be fixed. Already pre- What did he see? Is he just predicting it? The Zerglings went towards the main. Dark with his mind hacks. I mean, it's not an unpredictable thing here. This timing, but here come the Marines. He may have had a Zergling. It, it went over. He's going to split some of those Zerglings. Rain's a bit convoluted here. There are four overlords out there, so without a Viking, it's very unlikely he's going to slip into the main unnoticed. Zerglings, get this around. And wow, the Marines are just fighting. And he gets out with most of them. Beyond knows exactly how long he can fight before it gets too bad. Hydras, Zerglings, Banelings, oh my. And the upgrades are near even timings. Dark actually has a very slight advantage on him. He's going to continue working on that as he starts plus two immediately. Plus two carapace. He's got it. There we go. Armor is done for Beyond. Should be starting 2 2 in just now. Mm, meow. No. No, close enough. Melee attack, carapace, infantry, armor, and weapons. Plus two across the board. The un sets up for the attack. Baneling speed is not done, so Dark has to be a little careful. Those little mines are a real and present danger. Poking and prodding and threatening. The un clearly trying to get as much damage done before Baneling speed, but doesn't want to overextend because if he does get caught out, it could be disastrous. Banelings rolling in. And by that I mean waddling as the Zerglings overrun the rest. And Beyond picks up and gets out. Widowmind's drawn out of the fray. Dark using a more ham-fisted approach to defuse them, but gets it done. Drilling claws and plus one mech armor. Oof. So, he's settling in for sure then. That is Widowmind and Metamech armor. To start things. Oh my god, the target fire. Beyond casually guns down the Banelings. And, uh, Dark is kind of forced to pull back. As the cost efficiency of the Marines is just so damn high. 100 Zerglings. 32 Marines. Honestly, more than I thought. And some Banelings in there, of course, as well. But Hive already begins. Not particularly early, but definitely not late. Exactly when he means to. Rocks taken down, opening up some more avenues of attack. Hydras, Zerglings, Banelings, oh my. Drilling claws, more widow mines, full on macro, 78 workers apiece. We got five bases for dark. There's at least one macro hatch. Beyond is working on base four. Uh, making it an orbital right now. About three o'clock location. Yeah, 2.45. And the Whittle Mine looking for a connection. That one is good. And Dark Supply plummets. Whittle Mine's getting dragged over the Terran Army, though. Vengeance! As, uh... 
I believe the Widow Mines killed just as much of the Terran as the Zerg did there. So, biting both ways. A double-edged grenade, which is a regular grenade, but I didn't. Lurker Den, on the way. Actually, a little late on that Lurker Den in comparison to the Hive Tech time. And that will leave quite a window for Beyond to get damage done, potentially even with plus three Marines, though he's not quite there yet. Aelin gets a couple Marines in the main. Lurker Den is spotted here, so that'll put a little bit of extra pep in Beyond's step here. It's called Stim Winter. Uh, okay. As he knows, he's on a timer to get the damage done, but the Hydraling Bane still heavily contesting. Ghost Academy's on the way. And beyond, ooh, Banelings are connecting. The Hydras and Lings are too much as well. He's forced all the way back, but the Marines in the main. How is this happening? Okay, run down for the most part. Takes out a few more. Ghost in production, plus three, plus three. Really across the board. Actually, plus one ranged attack for Dark. And plus three Carapace alongside it. But Beyond is going to have the advantage on it. Overall, he's got a fifth command center done. Six and seven on the way, and I'm going to st stop counting soon. Kills his own creep tumor in order to free up the space for a hatchery. Does Dark. Viper's on the way. So we're going to that full unabridged late game composition. The only thing we're missing is a spire and a greater spire, but I think we're pretty far off that for now. We haven't even gotten to the investor phase. Ah, but it's the Nidus time. The age of Nidus has begun. And I don't think Beyond's going to be making like a turret wall in his main or anything like that to keep the overseers out. A whole bunch of lurkers. I don't know where the ghosts were going. I'm pretty sure they uh, misrallied there a bit. Lurker range in production. Overlords. Not even dropper lords over there. <laughs> As we're settling in. The knight is going to be attempted. If he can actually get to the main. There's some big ifs here. But if he actually gets... To, wow. He's scanned... Yeah, those overlords, pretty sus. But they're not even dropper lords. Like, what are you going to do with them, bro? The, the sensor tower comes up split second before the night is complete. Which may give him some extra info on what this is. Ooh, looks like we just missed a Widowmon hit. We didn't miss that one. But Dark easily rebuilds. The night is in position. Beyond is going to bunker down. Not, not literally. Unless you count planet... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hellbats on the way. Three more factories of Hellbats. The ghost count! Oh, my. Has grown dramatically. He's up to 12. And he's been building him for a bit. Another Nidus in the main. Dark. Slicing through at the third. Keeping him busy while he attacks every other angle. We don't mind hit. Yanks and some of the ghosts. We'll take him out. The snipes come through, but several of the ghosts go down. Snipes not able to connect on the overseers. Knight is taken out. Another one to the north. Dark trying to overwhelm Beyond before he can get entrenched here. So far, so good. But the ghosts are working their way forward. And with nothing to cover, the lurkers are gunned down. Only one survivor. 30 SCVs. Beyond plummets to 74. Ah. Uh, Superficial damage economically will allow Dark a bit of a lead, but not enough so that he's going to have the ability to deal with those ghosts. Mass Hellbat. He's just now getting the mech weapons upgrades. He did get the plus one mech armor before. A single lurker to the north side, trying to get right on top of the tank, up close and personal. So that way the tank has no upper. Yep, that's a lurker. I uh, should be able to get a snipe off momentarily, but the lurker almost kills the tank. He repairs it just in time. Another lurker. Banelings rolling in. More lurkers. Looking for more. Has to move back. Snipes are good. Another knight is towards the main. Zerglings running into the third. A barrage of attacks from Dark. Four orbitals, though, so even if Eddie go out on the field, Dark just needs to maintain his army. I mean, well, both of them do. I mean, beyond, though. 
as during all this, his army supply has only grown as his SCV count has, has dwindled somewhat. Double armory will be the choice. Dark is now at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases. He's gotten most of the bases on his side of the map. Starting to work towards beyond. Uh, beyond? Uh, uh, we're only 15 minutes in, which means the main base isn't even fully mined out yet. The natural is getting there. But we still got a ways to go on that front. Meanwhile. Hail. Yes, yes. Meanwhile, pathogen gland, burrow. It's the age of the fester. Dark has realized he's accepted. This means Dark doesn't think that he can win with the Hydraling Bane Lurker anymore. He thinks we're going to that late game. And he's picking, honestly, I think he's picking the right timing here. He's only lost a few thousand more minerals, about 1,500 more gas, which is, is relatively good for this stage of the game. Lightning Cloud, though, as he works his way through the Bane Links, doesn't actually kill the planetary. He finishes it off with another group of Banes. Was it worth it? Oh, uh, I don't know about that one. It looked good, but he actually lost uh, four or five thousand more minerals there. And he can't remax out. So while he tried to smash the composition, he actually doesn't end up doing much more than superficial damage to the armor. And Bion already has double-digit command centers. Yeah, he's got eight orbitals. Okay, so he doesn't have double-digit command centers, Winter. Unless you count the ones in production. But that that's... Just to be pedantic. We finally got that blue flame. And plus two, we don't have the hell sheds yet. Not until plus three attack. On the hellbat. Neural Parasite. Yeah, we're just... Okay, well, this tells you the kind of game. We got high sec auto tracking, building armor, and Neural Parasite all in production. Now finishing up with the Neural. So, yep, settle in. And if you weren't already settled... Wow, the command center just dies. The Banelings roll into the mineral line. The Lurkers scamper through, dump their faces down. The Banelings still covering for them takes out a bunch of those siege tanks but dark loses so much in turn i think he tried to shoot a changeling just ended up shooting one of his depots 600 zerglings this seems like just the beginning that orbital is burning everything here is burning uh hello there's even some creep blocking this base from the nidus um one scv will repair at a time big job huh We got four ghosts, two tanks, two hellbats in production as we've kind of graduated past marines and marauders. I'm sure if he's desperate, he'll build them again, but... What are we at? Yeah, five marauders, ten marines left. Otherwise, we're only building the good units. Nidus actually comes through. Just manually detonating or... or oh my god, the snipes on the banelings. The hellbats try to jump and get down, Mr. Ghost! But they... Oh, the ghost went too far! Losing a sizable amount there. He's now lost 17 of them. A lot of good baneling kills. Dark has actually lost so many overseers, he's supply blocked awkwardly here. At 183. The overseers need to bring up. Hops back into the Nidus. Doesn't save most of the lurkers. Dunks a Nidus directly on top of the siege tank. It's gonna come through. He pops a few lurkers out. Will force some more scans at the least. Kills the tank. Vikings on deck. Actually doing some decent damage there. Trying to scramble back. Uses the vision for another Nidus. As he works his way through. But the Lurkers are actually doing so much damage. That might help the Nidus complete. Yeah, some more ghosts have to come back. And the scan runs out. And any extra time he spends dealing with this is time he's not looking the other way. As Dark still has enough Hydras, Lings, Lurkers, and Banelings. To be able to do the damage. Dark still in the driver's seat here. But Beyond is definitely holding on to the hood of the car and taking pot shots through the windshield. I will say that much.
We've got plus three mech weapons on the way as, as Beyond tries to maintain some sense of sanity in his life. Bunch of accidentally burrowed hydras and lings to the north. It's like he noticed. Another Nidus! Dark trying to expand to both sides of the map and some of Beyond's. Just trying to overwhelm Beyond with so much. He can mine out these bases while keeping Beyond down. Each base has 20k minerals, 44.5k gas, give or take. Well, not give or take on the gas. I'm not 100% on the minerals. It's something like that. 20k, I think is right. Um, but, so that means he could lose over 20,000 more resources. Or give or take 20 or 1,000 or so. As long as he keeps Beyond off at least one base. Well, technically it'd be 40,000. Because then he'd have one more base and be able to have one less. But, let's just say 20k. All right, let's 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 make it a little bit more safe. And the Infester is wandering a turret range, unfortunately. Yanks the Liberators and the MP on the Infester. Doesn't actually end up killing it, but it's so much else. Looks for the Snipes. The Zerg army retreats in time. I just want to see how many Zerglings Dark loses by the end of this. We're almost at 1,000. And there is no end in sight. As Dark still has plenty of minerals... And he's willing to spend it, but there are hell chads on the field. Plus three blue flame hell bats. Homegrown, organic, free trade hell bats over here. All right, get them while they're not nerfed. Of all the things to nerf, plus three hell bats. No. <sighs> Mostly because them one shotting zerglings is just too strong. I can think of another unit that one-shot Zerglings that I would consider maybe a bit strong. What rhymes with Baneling Ma. Ghosts trying to move forward. Dark giving up on mining this base. Actually yanking Ghosts and gets a tank as well. Those Vikings. No, nope, Vipers. Oh my. <sighs> How long have we been... Ah! More Zerglings. More banlings. 830. Burrowed in Fester. Does he get the fungal? He can't really unburrow underneath the Hellbats. He wanders into the scan, which is subpar. Another round of Zerglings. Trying to overrun the siege tanks. Will succeed. And beyond it, like beyond has been sitting on significantly less supply. Though part of that is Dark being on uh, 92 drones. But Beyond has not been able to max out. Like, this has not been a turtle game. They're not building up massive ba Well, Dark kind of is. But Beyond is continually stretched for minerals and gas. Dark has mined 13,000 more minerals, but only a few hundred more gas. So he's really leaning on those Zerglings. And Beyond has four factories producing well, tanks and hellbats. So he's essentially doing a brood war transition into that mech army with ghosts in support. Kind of taking the place of science vessels from brood war. Neural Parasite on a tank to interrupt the ghost snipes. And also because that's probably all he could get there. The ghosts line up some shots. Another Nidus. I have no idea how many Nidus at this point. Hydra's trying to come in. Hellbats also good against them. 13 Nidus Worms. Has Dark, Dark has not lost another building, including hatcheries. Though that might be untrue momentarily. He has lost not a single other building. But Nidus Worms. 13 of them. That is madness to me. And also very likely about to change. As Beyond is finally closing the distance on one of his hatcheries. The Dark has man managed to push the line. Over the center, on the Beyond side of the map. And Beyond is only now tenuously pushing back. The creep is everywhere. He's trying to protect that hatchery. The Overseer count is too damn high to even consider sniping in this fight. But the Lurkers are not able to close the distance. Plus three might be good for Hell Chads, but it's definitely not bad for Siege Tanks. These are almost fully upgraded Siege Tanks here. Plus three, plus two, doing terrible, terrible damage on every hit. Still some more. More Zerglings. I just saw 80 Zerglings in production. As Dark has, has gone with a very mineral-heavy army. 
despite all the lurkers and bane, he's mostly been reliant on the zerglings. In many ways. More banelings rolling in. The lurkers being dealt with. The zerglings to the north. Does he have his adrenal glands? Of course he does. Dark doesn't forget that one. Overrunning. Oh, gets another tank. He just keeps going. 1,136 zerglings. And still, no end in sight. I think because of the sheer number of anti... Like, literally every unit beyond his building kills zerglings. Relatively efficiently. Hellbats, siege tanks, and ghosts. The siege tanks, weirdly enough, are probably the weakest unit. Finally, Dark loses a building that isn't a Nidus. His first hatchery to the north, and Beyond will claim it. Finally, some breathing room. But Dark has claimed the corners. Beyond didn't even mine out of his third. As we're, we're slowly, like, Dark is kind of slicing the map. He's like, we'll split it evenly. 60-40. My way. I get... Ugh. Pray I do not alter the deal. More Zerglings. How many on the field right now? We got 78 of them. How many Overseers have died? 15. Feels like so many more. They, he's been doing a good job of keeping him in the fights. One fight where those ghosts are able to cloak at the wrong time. Could spell disaster. But Dark, waiting for Beyond to retake this base, and the moment the planetary is finishing, he will smash it. Immediately, the second, like, he hits it right as it's finishing, so Beyond tries to hold on to it. I, I, you know what? I give that, like, two-thirds calculation and one-third coincidence, as Dark was just putting everything together. But he's comfortably mining now. From Beyond's side. This base is unequivocally... Uh, beyonds. Based on a half-map scenario, Dark should not be allowed to mine from both corners. Now, this center base is a bit more questionable. Um, but this base really is something that Beyond would, would love to contest. And the fact that Dark is mining from it meaningfully, yeah, yeah, he's gonna see it now. Beyond can't let both of these happen. Even if Dark has lost 20,000 more minerals, he's only lost 3,000 more gas. So if he has two more bases to work with, we got to bring out that, that notebook again. Crunch the numbers. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Another, well, the EMP's late. He's going to smash the base again. The main lane's rolling through in Dark. Overrunning the field. 21 SCVs. The Lurker is providing a lot of support here. The Darks. The Darks. The Ghosts. I'm sorry, Freudian slip. The Ghosts. Still high enough in number to drive back. But now meaningful damage. 1,300 Zerglings. And no end in... So well, actually, I think there's light at the end of the tunnel here. By Zergling 2,000, this game might be decided. Dropper Lords now. Beyond has a sensor tower comfortably scouting. Like, it, it might actually obscure the drops. The fact that, that Dark has a base over here. He might not notice it moving on the minimap until it's potentially too late. As Dark is going to try to undercut the production. Beyond just... Oh my god. He's mining from his... Brenda, come back here! Where are you going? I want to see the world! You said... I could scout the world. Yes, but not like this. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'm sorry, I blacked out for a second. Turrets, he knows Dark's signature move with the Infestors. Oh, Neuroparasite and SCV. Build a command set. We can't build a command center on Creep. We have a few Neuroparasite and SCV, unfortunately. The Dropper Lords, Operation Overlord is now in full effect. The orbitals are crumbling. They have the armor upgrade. But Beyond is not looking that way as Dark is hitting here as well. Two orbitals taken out. The Zergling still finding success. And Aninus, he's got another orbital. 
This might be the most orbitals ever killed by Zerglings in a single game. Dark is, is keeping Beyond so busy, he's literally not able to lift his buildings in time. He gets one away, but he lost three in the main. He's down to four, which is still a pretty comfortable number, but he lost half of his orbitals to Zerglings, which requires a it requires Dark to stretch his multitasking just unrealistically far. He managed to do a three, four pronged attack at this stage of the game and successfully take out Beyond's infrastructure with Zerglings. So maybe that 2000 Zergling number wasn't so ridiculous. 1400 down, but he's still making progress. Assimilation successful. Oh, he took a tank. Oh, the EMPs are good, but the Zerglings, they come in from every side. There's no detection here. Awkwardly for the ghosts. And that means they won't survive for now. He needs more overseers. And the Zerglings in the main unburrow. Where did this lurker come from? I think he juggled it in with a drop of lord. Gonna work on the remaining add-ons. Not like Beyond can really afford them. But Dark is done toying with him. It feels like Dark just kind of... It's like he grew four more. I can, I can see Dark. Like, they're fighting in, like, a, an MMA fight. I'm not talking about the StarCraft player. And then, like, they get three or four rounds in. Let's say round five comes around. It's two to two. I don't know how they score these things. And then Dark just pops out two extra arms and two extra legs. He's like, what's up? <laughs> and that's what it feels like to fight Dark. And that's why he's the final boss. Is even in the grand finals of a tournament. He can still feel like he's having fun with it until he becomes an absolute killer. They didn't name the Souls games after him for no reason. All right. But it's not over yet. It never is until the 2000th Zergling dies. There's still six ghosts, eight Hellbats. Dark doesn't have a lot of money to work with. He's long distance mining from Beyond's Something that could have been defined as his third. The siege tanks still finding damage. Like a surprising amount. And the ghosts get yanked into the zerglings, but he yanks in a hellbat, which may actually help a bit. We see a fungal. The hellbat's still finding. Oh, yeah, that many. Any amount of ghosts at this stage. He has to rebuild his ghost academy. But the economies have been just shattered here. Mostly by the fact there's not that many minerals left. Dark has mined nearly 100,000 minerals. And he's lost most of them. I, I think he can get to one that... I think he can get to 100k. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone mine 100,000 minerals in a game. Because that requires mining at least one, if not more, of your opponent's bases. In a half-map scenario. The thing is, Dark, it's not a shoo-in. Let's not, like, this isn't Dark waiting to kill Beyond. He's been playing. Honestly, he's, he's wanting, he's been wanting to break him with all these attacks. But he just qu hasn't quite been able to do it. And his army now is not incredible at all against what Beyond has. Beyond has eight ghosts, seven hellbats, three siege tanks, several medevacs. Dark doesn't really have the economy to just keep throwing units. He's got some lurkers up here. He's, he, this is the most methodical move. Can't believe this is happening. He still has so many drones, it might as well. He's not maxed out. This is the most methodical move of the game so far. The Vipers, the Infestors. Oh, he took the Liberator! Oh my god, he zones out the ghost with the Liberator! Oh! <laughs> well, yeah, that helps. The Liberator now. Well, it's still looking the wrong way, so. Oh my god! Well, well, if you can't figure out how to deal with Liberator, well, that's one counter to ghosts. You see, Terrans don't think ghosts are a problem because so many Terran units are good against them. The Liberator successfully zones out the ghosts. 
And now, well, Dark has made a lot of progress here. Oh, my God. He's almost mined out of those minerals. He's working on the south one. The fungals are good. He's utilizing pretty much every spell he can here. He's got the fungal. He's got the neural. Microbial shroud is, well, a, it would be a misclick, but he could use that because there's no more air units. He might as well just neural them. Oh my god, is he going to get there? 95,000. He's been 20,000 minerals. So that exact scenario we were talking about, usually it's theoretical. Usually it's just fill in time. But quite literally here, Dark has lost one base more of minerals and gas. Good thing he mined two more bases. I, I don't know how you feel when you see this as beyond. There's 160, 200 total. He may run out. He's going to need some of these. He knows it. So, you know, I choose to believe, like, Dark has a running tally of minerals he's mined in his head. He can calculate directly based on how many minerals have been mined. He's like, I need that 100k, bro. I get an achievement. Like, David Kim's gonna come back and give me, like, a, 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 a boot filled with champagne or something. Oh my god, the fungals are good. He's like, don't interrupt my mining. I don't want to see any snipes on these drones, bro. Both players are mining from this base. This happens way too often in dark games. Seeing two players mining from a single base. 96k. Sniping the lurkers. Beyond? That's still enough ghosts that if dark gets too hasty. But Beyond has no more income. He's at zero minerals of income, which is not very many. He's got to do something. The fungals interrupt a lot of this. Oh, that Liberator. He gets it with an abduct. And the Queen's helping out. But there's actually not that much. Oh, there are Hydras. Oh, he's gonna... He, those ghosts are so clumped. He needs to heal them. But he can't afford another medevac. He also can barely afford to repair. Dark pulls back. You're never gonna get that 100k like this, bro. He only catches one ghost, but one ghost is precious. The lurkers are looking for it. There is a, uh, there is a missile turret here. Even the drones are getting involved. The ghosts pull back. I guess the drones don't have much else to do. But he pushes them off. He's like, I need that 100k, bro. I'm not gonna get it without this base. And that might be true. There's only like 200, 400. Yeah, there's only like 1,000 left over here. He's not gonna mine 100k without that base. He literally has no more minerals left on his side. The fungals. And, and there's still the real danger of this army. Like, a few good EMPs? What is this? What is the ground army of Dark? It's 10 infestors, 5 lurkers, 21 zerglings. It's been 6, 1580 zerglings. We won't get 2k, unfortunate. But the ghosts. There's enough medevacs. Oh, but the ghost didn't have the energy. Wait, he had a snipe. He snipes another ghost. Dark. 97.8. We're so close. Honestly, 2,000 more minerals is a huge deal right now. Bungle. Can he chain it? I think he has two or three more. The Viper. EMPs. Oh my god, the snipes. It's so tense. This is actually so close. Because Beyond's army can still very much win this. Oh, try not to waste too many banes. He's just rolling. He's going for the Hellbats. He's just go giving up the ghost. Wow, the split. Oh, there's a... Where did that Reaper come from? Was that a misclick? 98.5. There's still that one Viper. Dark has no money. Snipes. But the Fungals are amazing! And the ghost! GG! Dark! Never made it! 98.5 thousand! But I gotta stress, that was actually so close. Beyond. With... 
<sighs> There's no ground on Like, it was so close. All he needs to do is snipe out the ground on it. He may have thought that, that like, he GG'd before the ghost could even do anything. Honestly, I think that may have been a bit preemptive. But with 15 investors on the field, I guess. A bit preemptive, because Doc didn't get his uh, 100k yet. But if we let the replay just keep going, maybe eventually he gets there. It's unclear. But either way. Ah, it's over. Dark takes it. Three to two. In one of the most final boss victories I've seen. Out of so many. From the man himself. But beyond broken mentally and physically. As Dark throws 1,600 Zerglings. And apparently that's exactly enough in order to achieve victory. Well, thank you for spending a decent chunk of your day with me. I hope I made it just a little bit better. Thank you for watching. You got the means of motivation. Check out Patreon, YouTube membership. Otherwise, like, subscribe. Um, uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.